Hey, Chris. Hey, Kyle. I have the new Starlings 3 here. I think you're gonna love them. Nice. Can't wait to check these out. Thanks. By the way, my car broke down, and I was wondering if you... Kyle? Oh. What the... Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Stop it. Stop it. Don't... No, no. What's happening? Hey, be quiet in here. Oh! <laughs> Kyle wasn't prepared to be blown away by the new Silent Wings 3 fans from Be Quiet. Are you? For a cooler, quieter system, click on the link in the description for more info. <laughs> What's up, guys? So this week I spent some time testing out the fastest $1,000 PC, which I put together a week or two ago. So if you missed that build video, be sure to check it out. Now the main objective of that system was to get it under a mid-range price point, but have it deliver high-end gaming performance using a 6600K and a Zotac GTX 1070 Amp Edition. So how did it do? Well, the results are in, and congratulations, you're not the father. Wait, that's not right. These are the results we're talking about today, and as you can see here, I pushed our 6600K to 4.5 gigahertz on air with the Hyper 212 Evo, which did a nice job of keeping load temps from surpassing 58 degrees Celsius. Overclocking our GPU, on the other hand, was a bit of a struggle due to thermal constraints. Not due to the card's custom cooler itself, but rather the limited airflow in our Apevia XQ Pack 3 chassis. Now, in the build video from a week or two ago, I voiced my concerns about the case's single 140mm intake fan and its ability to provide adequate cooling for our beefy GPU. Unfortunately, I was correct in my assumption, as the overclocked card quickly rose above 81 degrees Celsius when maxing out the temp target, something I rarely see aftermarket cards in well-ventilated chassis do. To keep thermals in check, I dialed back the temp target to the safe rated limit of 81 degrees Celsius, which did squander our max OC potential a bit, allowing us a core clock offset of just 125 megahertz and a 400 megahertz boost on the memory clock. With these settings, the card hit a max core clock speed of 2070 megahertz, but after after 20 minutes of Unigen Heaven 4.0, we did encounter some thermal throttling, with the frequency averaging down to 1979 MHz. As a result, I'd be very curious to see how upgrading and expanding the fan situation in this chassis would improve thermal conditions and thus the card's overclocking headroom. But even though we couldn't swing any balls to the wall aggressive OCs, this is a GTX 1070 after all, which is a powerful card even at reference speeds. So on that note, let's see how it fared in the 7 benchmarks I ran on Windows 10 with the 372.70. Zero Wickle Drive. So even with a mediocre overclock on our GPU, the GTX 1070 Amp Edition showed pretty solid performance all around, yielding over 90 FPS in four of the six games tested at 1920x1080, and topping 60 FPS in five of the titles at 2560x1440, not too bad. For the somewhat underwhelming score in GTA 5, I should mention that the game was run with 4x MSAA, which is pretty crushing on the GPU, and to improve frame rates, users can probably crank the setting down to 2x, for example, without much loss in visual quality, especially especially at Quad HD. Finally, the acoustics of the system were tested in order to see how much noise was generated when idling and under load. Here's a listen.
As you can hear, the rig was no louder idling than it was when powered off, thanks to the zero RPM fans on the Zotac cooler, and I suppose that's one benefit of only having one case fan. Load acoustics are definitely audible from a few feet away, but it's far from bothersome and easily drowned out by even the slightest in-game audio. Wrapping things up here, it pains me to see a killer card like Zotac's GTX 1070 Amp Edition unable to reach its fullest potential due to the case's thermal constraints, and users looking to build out this exact system should really consider upgrading the front intake fan and installing a 120 exhaust at the back of the case if they can spare an extra 30 to 40 bucks. That being said, the rig still delivers great gaming performance at 1440p, with enough horsepower for turning on all the eye candy that we PC gamers love oh so much. All the while, the PC maintains a favorable acoustic profile for unobtrusive gaming sessions. Case in point, if the budget for your next PC is in the ballpark of $1,000, today's findings indicate that this may very well be one of the fastest gaming PCs your money can buy. But that's going to do it for now, guys. Before you go, don't forget to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and also feel free to check out the store in the description below or in the card up in the corner where you can buy some of the finest hyper-threaded t-shirts on the interwebs. As always, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ready, and I'll see y'all in the next video.